We live? We live. Hey, welcome. Work smarter, not harder. Or work harder, not smarter. Which one are you doing? Smarter, harder. You know, it depends on the day. Sometimes I work quite hard, but if you do it too much, you know, where it's going to lead to, it's, it's going to lead to burnout. And uh, I think we all been there. So today we're going to be discussing much more about how to work smarter. And of course you need to de- have these glasses to, to look smart. And that's the first step. <laughs> where do you get these glasses? Yeah. Uh, to the commercials. <laughs> Go to the bikercenter.com, get these day glasses. And you have some glasses I, I've never seen, but uh, these help you to focus and uh, especially in bright light environments. Or if you want to have evening glasses before you go to sleep, that's also what we wear. But uh, let's go to today's topics and this, this webinar. It's, it's about optimizing your work life and maybe life in general, but uh, especially productivity and all the aspects that are related to your workflow. And I think getting into the flow state, that's uh, usually optimal to have, like uh, getting to the flow state, that's where you get the most work done. And uh, today we have a lot of questions that were sent by you. So this is also a Q&A webinar, but we also have a lot of good slides and information we want to share you. Yeah, I mean, just to kick it off, like right on the chat where you're coming in. Uh, today we have four topics, accessing the flow state to stay focused all day, adaptogenic herbs and supplements for cognitive health, and intermittent fasting, timing your meals for better, better productivity, as well as optimizing circadian rhythms and rest and recovery. These are actually topics that we asked our audience, what do you want us to focus on? So these are the topics we're going to cover. So if any one of those sounded good for you, like hang on, stay online, and uh, uh, we will be covering many of these things as well. So if you have any other things you want to want us to cover, like please comment on the chat. So let's see if there is already some good comments coming in. So we got... Uh, we got chat. God, where is Dude, you need to optimize your mouse. Where is the chat? <laughs> okay, here we go. Chat. Parasympathetic. Okay, fantastic. Harder, better, faster, stronger. Yeah, Daft Punk. That's one of those <laughs> songs. Actually, we started one of the first biker summits in 2015. We actually did the better, faster, stronger song. Mm. Uh, I remember in that yeah. conference when, when we came on stage or something like this, that was yeah. pretty epic. But you know, this, this is not the new things. Sitius, altius, fortius, like Latin, like from the antiques, Olympic games, like uh, higher, faster, stronger, and, and so on. So, um, but yeah, let's go into the biker's workstation because that's what we want to optimize first, the surroundings where we work so that everything is ha- at hand. And uh, this is a cl- classic image from the Biker's Handbook, Biker's Workstation. I think s- this is still very valid. And uh, all of our workstations here at the Biker's at their office look like this. Mm. So uh, w- what, what are the absolute key elements for you? So <laughs> here we go. Let's, let's take a look at my desk. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so this is my desk that I built during the pandemic. In a good way. Actually, this has been optimized a lot since then. Uh, like, but, but like if I cover some of the main details here. So one thing that is essential for me is that the uh, monitor is at eye level. Many people still, even if they have an external monitor, they keep it on the table and it's not high enough. You need that to be like at eye level. Uh, I also have a kind of a daylight lamp. I actually use my uh, studio light, which is right above like the screen. Here. Can you put the screen back? Thank you. Yeah. So like that that uh, image right up there is the one, one that we use. Uh, and I also have separate good camera that I use um, as well as 
uh, a separate microphone. I don't like to use headsets or anything like this. If you're in Zoom calls, like headsets start to like really restrict your blood flow to the brain. So mm. like having headsets on all day long is not good. At least I don't feel good. I feel a bit foggy. Next to the table, like if you look really like carefully on the background, there is like a black thing on the side. That's actually a, a yoga uh, kind of hammock. Um, it's it's basically like a hammock in which I can hang upside down in inversion. So occasionally I take a break from the desk and I just hang upside down. This desk is actually also a standing desk, so I can adjust it. I usually sit morning hours here at the desk and after lunch uh, I usually sit. Uh, and that's that's Stand. how I do go for it. Yeah. So... Um How's for you? Like, what what are your like kind of your details that you have at your desk? Well, it's it's, it's definitely not that artistic as your desk. It's absolutely beautiful, and uh, you know, I I could just watch all the details for hours. But um, for for me, it's important to have uh, a desk that's an ad- adjustable height desk, so I can I can vary my pos- posture because if I sit, let's say, for an hour straight. I feel it in my body and also in the cognition and the blood flow of the brain. Uh, so some kind of movement is absolutely necessary. And, you know, adjusting the desk, that's uh, kind of like a no-brainer to anyone. And you can have a saddle chair. So if you want to let's sit, sit like a 135-degree position of the back and, and the femur, that seems to be optimal for, for the pelvis. Mm. And also like standing, we have a standing mat that's kind of like anti-fatigue mat. That's uh, an easier for your joints, uh, so you don't get that tired while while standing and having a li- like massage ball. And I usually do like these kind of mini workouts, maybe every every hour, sometimes every 30 minutes. So that's that's very key for me. Ha- that, the interesting thing is when you have a monitor at eye level. If you have it like too low, that's also a signal to your brain that hey, now it's a time to rest, and you may feel a bit tired. Mm. But uh, Based, based on Andrew Huberman's studies, if you watch up and keep your eyes there, that's that's a way to actually refresh <gasps> your brain, <laughs> have some more noradrenaline secretion. I actually have tried this. I was like, first, uh, okay, locus caroleus, it's it's over here. But yeah, having more look at your uh, third eye all the time, like. <laughs> yeah. Um, one Be- thing I one thing I want to share sure. about breaks, like, what is your favorite? Uh, exercise to do on a break? I usually go on a vibration plate. We have this hyper vibe and I do some push-ups with perfect push-up uh, like these kind of handles, rotating handles. I like to do squats, usually like single leg, single leg squats with some kettlebells, maybe kettlebell swings, kettlebell snatches and you know wh- whatever comes to my mind. If, if I don't want to strain my body too much then I have a, like a basic like stick. I, I might do like this uh, Olympic weightlifting squats or whatever comes to my mind. Mm. For me, actually, I started doing something new. I realized that there is one movement I've been doing, which is completely idiotic and stupid to do if you do desk work. Would you guess which one it is? Sitting. It's one. Of, it's a. It's a movement. Squat. It's a. It's one of the movements. Which one of the movements you do that you think might not be the best one out of all of those? Mm. For someone who sits. Squats. No. It's push-ups. You know why? No. Because uh, when you sit a lot in front of computer and you have yeah, like this kind yeah, of this kind of that. pose all the time, um, this actually shortens uh, and stiffens specs. Uh, like yeah. Yeah, specs. And like this part, like you, if you massage here, it can be super painful. You can try it yourself as well. And mm. actually when you do this kind of movement, you are making this condition worse. So what would be uh, a much better? Um, Give me that uh, rope, that white one. Yeah. So I can I can demonstrate. So that's that's a, that's a perfect thing. So many many people who do desk work they have tight pecs. So what I usually do, like you have seen our weekly meetings, I I might do like pull it up here and then just like stretch Bring and and rotate. Yeah. So this this opens that's the chest, one. activates also. The scapula. And this is actually pretty damn hard, hard to do. 
Yeah, that's a very good like camera angle. Yeah, and another one is that you pull put this up here, then I'm gonna smash your head, but you know, do like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So this is also very good opening up. <laughs> here we go. Can I so show can I show something that I learned as oh well? Yeah. <laughs> So you're gonna strangle me? Actually, one of the like key things that I learned by really digging into it is actually to do a reverse push-up, which is a bridge, basically. Mm. So instead of going this way, you go backwards, and you learn to do a bridge, and you learn to like actually do push-ups from that position. If you have re really like tight hamstrings and uh, uh, pelvis, then um, having your feet elevated on like stairs or some kind of box while you do it makes it much easier um, for just about anyone who is a piece of wood like me. But there's like, <laughs> there's a couple of exercises that you can learn, like look on YouTube, like how to uh, get into a bridge and look at what are the supportive mm. exercises for bridge. All of those movements are amazing to reverse the problems that you get from tight shoulders because of sitting too much in front of mm -hmm. computer. But there's one move that I really love, and it is actually, um, I'm gonna show it right there. Uh, I think that's gonna be the yeah. best. Let's see if, um, if we take- I would add here, like besides bridge, the tabletop move. So Google or watch on YouTube, yeah. the tabletop, that's also very anti-sitting. Okay, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show it now. So um, we, don't, we don't have the best possible move here, but like, I'm gonna go here on the floor, like if you can just turn your like, uh, this this a bit like this way, so people can see a little bit. Um, like this movement, like if you find a table or something, you put your uh, elbows on the table, and then you actually take one of these exercise bands between your hands, okay, like this, and this way around, and you go on the table, and then you like, just go down and while you have your hands behind your neck, you try to like pull Open. outwards, yeah. okay? Like this movement, wow. like try it out. It's really freaking hard and you feel it on mm. your sides. That's a new one for me as well. So. Uh, that's, that's really amazing. And uh, there is some yoga poses like, where you like, like also work on rotations, which are extremely useful for, for Oh. <laughs> okay, like those kind of movements you go for. I did watch too much Kung Fu movies yeah. when I was young. <laughs> okay, so basically think about all the movements that are reverse of this kind of pose. Like everything that you can do, like, mm. um, uh, like in terms of yoga or stretches or exercises, very good movements for a break from computer. Yeah, like... 45 seconds, a minute. I usually have like this Pomodoro mini breaks every 30 minutes and uh, maybe a five minute break every hour when I might do like some actual weightlifting sessions. You know, just one set or a couple of movements. But uh, for me, the green ball, that's what we have here at the office. I also have it back at the home office, have fresh air, like window to open, that's actually closed there. but. The, the CO2 levels rise very easily and uh, the oxygen levels tend to drop. So that's that's making you dumber for sure if you don't have enough oxygen. So uh, of course natural lighting and in the evening maybe blocking this to too bright blue light. So basic mm. stuff. Basic stuff, amazing, like let's move on. If you have any questions, like just put them on the comments. Um, and by the way, we have, I think we have super chat enabled, so you can, anytime you can also, you know, give us a little donation if you want, we will be happy to answer your question. So accessing the flow state to stay focused all day, let's cover this. Um, let's take the first slide here. So what is flow state? Flow state is basically the moment when you are at the peak of your experience, you are basically kind of um, in an intense and focused state, the task is not too difficult, okay? It should not be too difficult that you get like frustrated. It should also not be like too boring that you start to fall asleep and lose focus. So imagine like uh, doing something that requires concentration, uh, like playing a game or 
going downhill skiing or something. So if you think about your work, it should be something like that. And it should be also void of interruptions, that you don't need to switch tasks like repeatedly. And I would say like one of the big toxins in... This off, put in, this off. Yeah, basically in the context of flow state, like any kind of notification is really, really bad. And uh, I think I can't show like, uh, I don't think we have a... Um, also switch show off all notifications on your laptop or on your computer, like emails, like all, all that disturb the uh, precious <laughs> flow state, because it, it's it's very hard to get back if you get constant disruptions and... That's that's a uh, yeah. Let's see. Maybe I take this one here. So you're looking looking obviously something. Yeah, I'm gonna Google something quickly here. Uh, one sec. Windows open, please. Okay, this one I wanted to show. Oh okay, so so this is a one sec app. And demo the wrong, just wants wrong, wants yeah. to show show that how it, how this works. So the this is, this is an app that can actually like stop you from doing your habits that are ruining your flow or ruining your productivity. So uh, for example, if you tend to go to the social media like the first time you wake up, or you know, let's 20, 30, 20 50 times even per day, that's actually gonna change your habits very easily because it's it's uh, not allowing you to go there and there's this kind of like a refraction time that you you have just um, have to wait so um here we go like th let's take the screenshot uh, uh the images out there so mm. this app one sec delay distracting apps and um so like take a look at that on the app store i'm gonna show very quickly here like on the camera like if you can get the side camera side camera. So on my phone, if I open up YouTube, for example, so it forces me to take a deep breath. And it's telling me I did this already 11 times today. And it gives me a few suggestions what else I could do. So it reads ice bath, weightlifting, massage, think if you forgot something. So you can actually mm. define like different things that it will suggest. And then you have a button to I don't want to open up YouTube. Now, if I do tap uh, continue to YouTube, it actually gives me like a bunch of emojis that are kind of the reasons why <laughs> I want to do it. So one of them is like, I'm bored, stressed, tired, procrastinate, anxious, sad, can't sleep. One of my favorite here is toilet. How many of you are looking at your phone in the toilet, like Instagram or I'm YouTube videos? To toilet is for toilet. <laughs> I have defined like for each app, I have also defined like the activity what I usually use it for. So YouTube, like the only option on top of that is learn. Uh, so I'm going to tap that. Mm -hmm. So um, actually this app is telling me I have already like saved three hours by using this app. I've used it only a few days. So that's already like a significant that's improvement. So please, please try to... Um, uh, like look into that app it's amazing also what you can do uh, and one one of the big features there is that i have the aura ring like many and uh, it records your sleep uh, into the apple health app and you can configure this so that when you wake up uh, so basically aura syncs your sleep data um, it will block your ability to use the phone for 30 minutes so when you wake up that's when your mm -hmm. decision capability is really lowest. And um, on that 30 minute window, instead of starting to browse social media, check messages, uh, your phone is completely useless. And there's just a timer and it reads like, go do something useful. And mm -hmm. that's when I, you know, do then all my morning things. As, uh, you know why this actually is so beneficial? Because when you wake up, your brain is in theta state. So you're kind of uh, like in between coming off the dreaming state, mm. and you're very, like, suggestible. So everything you, like, um, how, how, how would I put it? Absorb. You absorb everything, like, immediately, without any, like, uh, any filtration. 
So if you have like negative news immediately, you absorb your system, it's affecting you the whole day or same thing with social media. So you want to be very careful not to do anything stupid. So so that's that's really affecting the state of mood and also possibly uh, the flow flowing energy of the day. Right. Yeah. So the neuroanatomy of flow is basically one of the like big things that happens there is that your prefrontal cortex like that has like your some of your fo- highest decision making functions it is uh, shutting down basically like there's less analysis going on so actually in a mm. flow state there's like less worry about what's happening and going on you're just like super deeply focused and one of the kind of key uh, elements there is acetylcholine specifically and acetylcholine is is what really helps your attentiveness and if we look at acetylcholine the body is making acetylcholine from acetate and choline. So choline is in eggs, for example, and uh, um, from that it produces acetylcholine. And mm. so here are some of the supplements that do what boost your acetylcholine. My favorite for focus is not caffeine, actually. Caffeine mm. is a bit like, I, I think it creates a little bit of distraction. I think there is better combinations of things. Caffeine is not like good for flow. In, no, in my opinion, it's no. it's more like a, if you want to do like just like hammer down something very repetitive stuff. But if you want to kind of like open your mind into this more um, more more like um, artistic way of of uh, doing mm-hmm. things, then maybe something else. So what what, what do you take? What's, so my what's favorite really takes? for focus is uh, uh, is nicotine. No, not really, but <laughs> that's, I guess, like why some people... So, you, so that's why you like the chain smokers, the band. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's why people smoke, because they, they need a s- smoking break and something like this, because it really increases uh, uh, their ability to focus. Uh, but phosphatidylserine for me is like one of those things mm. that I really like. And, and many nootropic plants have alpha GPC or CDP choline or CT choline in it. So let's let's take like the qualia mind, which is... Uh, my absolute favorite. I don't take like the seven capsules because uh, I don't know where I would f- like fly to the moon. You know, one capsule, maybe two capsules is enough. But it also it has uh, Alcar, it has Alpha GPC, it has Citicoline, it has Phosphatidylserine, and probably almost all of these except for nicotine. Uh, Phosphatidylserine, I take in the evening or before bedtime because it lowers cortisol but i also realize that it's it's definitely priming my brain for the next day so i i take quite a bit of that like maybe 600 milligrams and um, yeah all of these are good so it depends um, like if you just want to have raw materials then i would concentrate on getting choline from like liver and eggs so that's all very good to have like the raw synthesis materials mm-hmm. Another thing that is my favorite is serotonin and dopamine. So let's talk about serotonin and dopamine a little bit. Serotonin is uh, important for rest and digest when your autonomic nervous system is more of uh, in, a, in a parasympathetic nervous system state. So that's good for creativity. I think also for like focused thinking and all that. If you're like hyper uh, activated, you're in a sympathetic nervous system overactivated state, uh, your attention will like bounce from one signal to another. So I don't, I don't think like these um, uh, things like caffeine that are highly dopaminergic are, mm. are that good because they put you in a fight or flight mode. Um, I think this is maybe why people like uh, uh, psychedelics because those are serotonergics uh, like microdosing and all that. But um, there is like 5-HTP could be, for example, one that enhances mood and calmness. Uh, also, tryptophan um, as a supplement might be useful, as well as um, I, I guess this is why people take like serotonin reuptake inhibitors as well, if they have ADHD and so on. Like mm. they have they have a little bit issues with this, yeah. like regulation of these things. Of course, like when it comes to ADHD, there is actually a question here about how does the flow state compare to ADHD hyperfocus. Oh, I don't know how to answer that. Do you have a good good answer to that, this one? Uh, yeah, the hyper focus. Uh, well, I have no experience, like N equals one experience, because I don't have ADHD. But um, I I think like the word 
say is like the hyper focus it, it's not that creative it, it, c- it could be like you can be very focused on like the single point of thing but um, maybe someone with ADHD could explain how, how does it feel and um, I don't think you can compare it necessarily to flow state because it's it's uh, it's, it's an all of, all of its own thing but yeah um, we have a few supplements we will cover in a minute that also help with ADHD on the other slides but let's also kick out the dopamine part here. So that's important for motivation and initiative. Like if you really want to like switch mm-hmm. tasks and get excited about new things uh, and not focus on one thing, that's when you want to boost dopamine. Uh, things like uh, phenylalanine, tyrosine, theanine, yeah. ro- rhodiola, rosea are good ones. And you might kind of, um, you might feel which ones you are usually like high on. So I know people who are like bouncing from one task to another all the time. They have difficulty focusing on one thing. Those people should not take dopaminergics. They should go for serotonergics yeah. or even GABA. I, I would say GABA first and yeah, foremost. Just slow down the nervous slows, system. Yeah. Slows down. So, so that's why l theanine is so uh, wonderful. That's, that's one of my favorites. Like if you take it with caffeine, it's an absolute... Absolute bliss because it affects not just dopamine but also GABA and serotonin and increases blood flow and increases the alpha state in the brain, which makes you more calm. So that it's easier to focus, easier to get into the flow. Um, about these like dopamine precursors, I don't think phenylalanine does much because it, it's in the like first. It's it's like the first part of the synthesis. But in my experience, the tyrosine is really potent. And there's a lot of studies on that. If you are like in a high stress situation, you are combating maybe a little bit of sleep deprivation. That helps a lot, and also it helps a lot to deal with cold stress. And actually, like my wife <laughs> took like maybe 500 to 1,000 milligrams of uh, tyrosine the other morning, and she was like full on for like maybe five hours. And uh, that's probably also the reason because it's a precursor for thyroid hormones but also for like dopamine. So it doesn't go straight to dopamine, but it goes to dopamine and then to dopamine. But if you take that too much, it can like fill over into noradrenaline, adrenaline, it, it can make you a bit nervous. Yeah, yeah. So like many of these nootropics that are on the market, uh, they actually mix all of these. So they have like some mm. serotonergics, dopaminergics, acetylcholinergics, uh, even gabaergics, like, like, but if you understand what's going on here, how these neurotransmitters help with different states, then you know like what specifically to take. If you have like an inability to concentrate or focus, like get some acetylcholine. If you have uh, like lack of motivation or something, uh, uh, get dopamine, uh, dopaminergic things. If, if that leads to switching too much tasks, then serotonergics will help. Um, mm. So that's kind of one way to look at this whole thing. Now let's let's take a look uh, at a couple of um, things. Uh, let's skip this one uh, and this one. Herbs. Yeah, let's go to adaptogenics and supplements, supplements. for uh, cognitive health. Um, let's look into those things. So many people who feel like caffeine is getting them too wired, I would recommend you to really look into adaptogens. And adaptogens are often working on other systems than dopamine in 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 this case, uh, although. Uh, rhodiola is working on the dopaminergic system but um, the good thing about adaptogens are that they don't like burn you out that fast either like they give you like long lasting focus and energy so if you are a bit like under stimulated they will stimulate you enough that you wake up and start focusing on things Mm. if you are overstimulated or nervous or stressed they will help you to balance your autonomic nervous system so so that um, you can deal more with stress so they are very good for adapting to stressful situations one of our favorites is uh, rhodiola yeah. and uh, only you can maybe like describe quickly because you're a big fan of this it doesn't work that well for me but like for you it works really yeah well. it uh, i used to do rhodiola maybe a couple of years not not almost on a daily basis but then i decided okay maybe it's time to have a little break because uh, it can also be a bit stimulating, even though it's it's not a stimulant, but it has a variety of effects. And uh, what I love about it is that it grows in Finland, it, in Lapland, and when you combine it with nettle, 
And my favorite is, is this product called Sinni. It's it's like glycerol extract with nettle and uh, rhodiola, and it's it's effects you can feel it like pretty immediately, even though it's adaptogen. But uh, for example, today I I had uh, for a long time I had a nice sip of that. But the interesting thing is that it has uh, multiple effects on different kind of areas, not just only in the brain, but also like in the HPA axis. So it helps to st- deal with stress. It helps to like downregulate if it's too overactive or if, if it's underactive, you can like activate it and uh, also helps to release, uh, as you can see, it affects in the in the reticular activating system in the brain stem, like back here noradrenaline, serotonin, dopamine, and acetylcholine. So it has some like a wide um, spectrum of different kind of uh, effects in different parts of the brain. So I think this is like a pretty, pretty like genius formulation. Mm. And it's not just cognitive stimulation, but also like calming emotionally. So it, it's a just wonderful uh, mm. herb. One thing that is really calming and useful is what uh, Manlio is commenting here is ashwagandha as well. So it reduces also the cortisol spike, which is really mm-hmm. lovely and nice. Uh, about cortisol, uh, one thing that I want to like remind us all is the cortisol and circadian rhythm link. But here you can see like how cortisol changes throughout the day. So in the morning hours, like ashwagandha works really well for sleep. So it actually reduces your morning cortisol mm-hmm. by 30%. And you can imagine how it affects this whole like curve. Like if you're too stressed in the mornings and uh, and and maybe in the evening, uh, taking some ashwagandha is helpful. And during the day as well, like especially in the morning hours, ashwagandha is is really good. Like uh, uh, I sometimes actually mix some ashwagandha in my coffee as well. It is wonderful. I I think uh, every evening I take this shodan form of micro encapsulated ashwagandha, and uh, it also has a really nice hormonal effects, especially for the males, and, but probably for females, but it raises testosterone and DHEA. And um, when you start taking it, you realize and you notice the, the like effects pretty, mm-hmm. pretty immediately. And uh, yeah, uh, you should have a little bit of breaks uh, as with every supplement, every adaptogen, and maybe mm-hmm. like seasonally do this. And uh, you should, what, what I usually do is I have a bottle and then it maybe runs out and I wait a little bit and then I buy a new one. It's uh, more of like this intuitive yeah. um, kind of uh, floating with, with these different kind of herbs and uh, testing out what works, what doesn't work. And Cy- so on. Cycling, cycling out. If you feel like something is not working anymore, just take a break. But there are some supplements where actually using them over time is beneficial. Like ashwagandha, you actually really need to like use on a regular basis for it to su- start to show its effects. That's true, yeah. Uh, there is some comments, like some people use uh, piracetams, like phenylpirastam, pirastam. There's also new peptis mentioned, which is an optimized version of piracetam. Uh, like these are prescription drugs, by the way, but um, for ADHD. But they do increase uh, acetylcholine, so they are built to focus. They also increase, if I remember correctly, long-term potentiation. So you have better mm. ability to store things into long-term memory. Uh, this is what, uh, by the way, uh, nicotine does also. Like uh, I guess, like that's why it's like one of those choice things for mm. for <laughs> creative types. Like they take a, take a little nicotine break. But of course, nicotine is very addictive, and studies show that. If you really want to get the benefits out of nicotine, you actually have to take a break out of it. Like you start to lose very quickly the cognitive benefits. So That's you actually true. start to need nicotine just to function normally. And mm. you're not like, you know, it's it's not a nootropic anymore. So think about this if you use like nicotine sprays or nicotine gums mm. or, or uh, rapé or something like this, that take a break from this stuff if you really want it to work for you. And... Um, we don't we don't like advise anyone to get addicted to nicotine, but it has some interesting effects when you take out the carcinogenic uh, effect of uh, of smoking. So actually, nicotine is an interesting nootropic. Now let's look at actually more healthy approaches to nootropics. So the neuroprotective side of things. Yeah. So the neuroprotection. I would say is one of the most important ways how you can oil the system. Like instead of thinking about boosting something, like stimulants often come with like some kind of side effect. You actually want to like 
give the building blocks and help oil the whole system. Like often your lack of focus might be because you have inflammation, you have brain fog, like the whole system is like maybe you're, you have gut issues, like all of this is like causing, causing issues. And some of my own favorites that I put in my coffee almost every single morning, one of those is turmeric. So I put turmeric as a spice. I use also some other spices as well, like cinnamon to balance blood sugar levels. I, I do use ginseng. Ginseng is actually one of those new tropics that is completely undervalued. It's often people think of ginseng, they think of sexual like stimulation in men uh, and like stamina. But Banax ginseng is amazing for focus and the reason it, it balances blood sugar. So often these nootropics uh, have their nootropic effect because they help you to focus for the reason that your blood sugar becomes balanced, so you're not anxious and needy and like feeling like I'm hungry or like hyper stimulated because of high blood sugar. Uh, pay attention, hey guys, we <laughs> we're changing slides here. Um, so yeah. so so yeah, um, uh, yeah, omega three fatty acids, DHA, uh, those are really good ways to oil the system. Citicoline is really good way to oil the system. Acetyl L-carnitine Alcar is amazing for uh, protecting your brain from like brain damage, <laughs> from like stress and working too much. Um, we actually have a couple of slides separately on al acetyl L-carnitine and creatine. Yeah. So um, yeah, about building blocks, um, I would say creatine like the first and foremost because it's it's so diverse and it's not just for uh, like muscle building and increasing power and like power endurance and so on. But it's um, actually good to have like in daily regime because it uh, improves general brain performance and especially like working memory processing speed and even short term memory and uh, overall intelligence. And uh, this is um, not just for old people who want to like uh, prevent from like uh, losing their muscle or lo losing their brain tissue, but uh, can actually increase neuronal growth in the hippocampus and that's very good and uh, essential place for memory formation but also for neurogenesis so a lot of the new neurons that are forming in the brain come from hippocampus and they travel there from other areas of the brain and uh, i've been taking creatine maybe what, what i'm like i'm 43 now i began supplementing it when i was 17 like for muscle muscle purposes and I've been like um, most of the time on creatine and uh, only like maybe five to ten years ago I realized that hey this is actually being really helpful for like the cognitive performance as well and uh, you don't need to have breaks about of this you can have breaks for sure but you don't need necessarily to have breaks and uh, this is one of the best supplements like uh, hands down mm. as a building supplement yeah so basically if you think of creatine like a lot of people think about muscle building but this is like one of the most undervalued but actually the best research nootropic like if you want the mm. nootropic like creatine actually might be better than a lot of things that you take so if we look at acetyl carnitine it protects uh, your brain from damage uh, it through the antioxidant functionality it actually also it's a form of carnitine that crosses the blood brain barrier because of the acetyl modification on it yeah and uh, for this reason it's it also exercises uh, or exerts an effect on the brain. Uh, if you have a concussion, al Alcar is a really good one. So through these different mechanisms of uh, lowering inflammation, low level inflammation in the brain, it can help your mood and motivation, help uh, improve attention, concentration and energy levels. And uh, yeah, I mean, here you can see also like people who often have like some kind of brain related like uh, um, uh, impairments, I guess, and or effects or inflammation, like in elderly or mm. people with dementia or even ADHD, you get like uh, you know all these feedback loops that are not beneficial. So they might get improvement from Alcar for its neuroprotective means. Yeah, one of the favorites that you actually introduced me to originally was uh, phosphatidylserine. That's total BS. Yeah. So <laughs> why is it not total BS? Because it's a very crucial part of the neurolipids in the brain, like the, the liposomal layers and, and uh, 
the lipid bilayer, and so you need these good good essential like uh, elements of that build uh, around the neurons. But uh, it's it's very interesting that uh, most of the studies have been d- done on like the prevent prevention of memory decline and. Um, you know, my, my parents, they began also taking this when I recommended, hey, they suddenly began, like, remembering old things, like, all well, like, their friends' names, and clearly they, like, both, like, short and long-term memory um, went up. But um, for me, this was mainly um, to, to lower the cortisol levels and uh, improve recovery. So if you up the dose, as I said previously, to 600 milligrams, even 800 milligrams, the effect on like a very hardcore workout, not, not even, you don't, it doesn't have to be that hardcore, but that, you know, heavy strain, heavy stress, uh, the effects on cortisol the next morning and throughout the night, it's uh, Im- imminent. And I've been trying this like without, and I, I usually go back. So this is a very stable for me uh, almost every night. I take it actually with omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA, because uh, those two together seem to be quite magical. Mm. There's some questions on like some, I guess, like more research chemicals, like someone is asking about bromantane. Um, we don't recommend anyone to take research chemicals because there is like um, unknown mechanisms. Like with mm. bromantane, it's not known how it exercise, exerts its mech, uh, effects on the dopaminergic and uh, and, and uh, serotonergic neurotransmitter systems. Um, I think <laughs> there is safer and better research ways to like affect these systems. But if it works for you and you don't see side effects, like it's, I mean, it's it's your risk if you want to like you know, do these kind of things. I think people get very excited about novel compounds, like someone is promoting something new, like, hey, try this, Mm -hmm. like it's amazing. And if you have a very noticeable, obvious effect, there is probably also an (laughs) obvious side Side effect effect. that you don't really even know yet, or the science doesn't know um, out of the- Or withdrawal symptoms. So usually if something is very potent and when you go off of it, it causes some kind of like, uh, because the, the, the neurochemistry has to go to the homeostasis if and if there's like this strong disruptor that like kind of shakes the the pool of of uh, chemicals in your brain like like drugs do so it's uh, usually causing like all kinds of nasty side effects that you don't want and uh, if it's a russian research chemical i would be maybe a bit careful there is one russian research chemical that i really like and that's nupept uh and Nupep is like an optimized version of Pirastam. And actually Pirastam, I think, is one of the oldest research and like widely used thing. Like I think like since mm. 70s, 80s or something. And Nupep Nupep was like, uh, it works on the same system and he has been also like studied for a long time. So some of these can be useful, but of course we don't give any advice to anyone about this. It's all your own risk on these things. But actually, even known nootropics might have some adverse effects. Like, let's take caffeine, for example. So, um, caffeine. I think caffeine, like, will be very soon obsolete because there is discoveries on a more optimal form mm-hmm. of caffeine. So, caffeine actually metabolizes and breaks down into um, uh, different compounds, and some of the like side effects of caffeine are caused some by some of the metabolites. The most beneficial effects in terms of focus, mood, enhancement, attention, and all of that is actually through uh, the liver uh, metabolizing it into paroxanthine. And paroxanthine is about 84% of caffeine metabolites. And it, that's the main reason Remember why you feel one. awesome about it. Yeah, yeah. And um, paroxanthine, it's available mainly in the U.S. now as a supplement, yeah. but it it and interestingly, it works on people who have this impaired ability to do, like convert it uh, into metabolites. Like if you have problems with uh, in genetics on sup one a two, which metabolizes it in the liver, you can skip that part by taking paroxanthine directly, and that gives mm-hmm. you some of the beneficial. Like experience yeah, basically with. Sean Wells uh, from the U.S. and like like the world world most uh, what's what's the uh, word he uses, but yeah, you know this this like uh, 
guru on, on supplementation, really nice guy, so he introduced me Paraxantin. I still haven't tried it because I usually drink coffee and I, I don't want to take both caffeine and Paraxantin at the same time, but you you certainly have tested Paraxantin. Yeah, I've, I've tested it, it's amazing. But I really like the taste of coffee, so I guess like indeed a decaf Maybe coffee. you have like in the future you have kind of like a, I'm sure they they will develop at some point of time a system that you have coffee, but there's no caffeine. There's only paraxanthin. I, I mm-hmm. think that's possible. If you can yeah, take you away the caffeine, you must have like some decaf, kind of decaf yeah. and put put that in there. And there is ways also to slow down the metabolism of. Mm caffeine and one of those is actually to make like a traditional fat based uh, bulletproof upgraded coffee like thing. this one here uh, and mct oil is amazing of course for it's uh, like as a fuel source for activating the uh, ketone bodies and it, it's very easily utilized by the brain you can see here some yeah like basically effects. it's uh well mct breaks down into uh, like acetones, acetoacetate, and beta hydroxybutyrate. But if you take uh, the caprylic acid, that's actually there's a straight, well not straight. It, if you drink it, doesn't go <laughs> like straight to the brain, but it goes into a, like a small intestine and then to the enterohepatic circle, and then from there on to the circulation and uh, through the blood-brain barrier to the brain, and it's very effectively used in the brain. So that's the C8 caprylic acid, and that's why many biokers are raving about its effects. And uh, I always tell this tr- story when I gave my mother-in-law, like th- made th- this kind of like this fatty coffee with C8, in our old apartment, and she drank it, and <laughs> she cleaned the whole fucking. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm swearing here, but she cleaned the whole whole house, and like had so much energy that uh, I, I've never seen. Uh, Sounds like one of these like uh, <laughs> uh, uh, requiem for a dream movie scenes where the cl- lady takes like amphetamine and cleans the whole house. Like yeah, uh, yeah, but without that, but yeah, crazy movie, crazy movies. So. Um, one thing that I start putting into my coffee for the antioxidant uh, and actually nootropic capability is actually uh, bilberry. Mm. So why why do I put uh, bilberry <laughs> into my coffee? Bilberry. Uh, bilberry powder, like if you can get the slide up. Um, so do we have a specific yeah, slide. Like bilberries right there, neuroprotective food. And I, uh, there is actually studies on bilberries. Bilberries like blueberry, but it's like a more badass version of it. Um, so I put like uh, an extract of bilberry into my coffee, and it's amazing for like how it like phew, like takes the whole upgraded coffee on another level. So is that bu- the Estonian one, like the liquid? Yeah, I have a, like a liquid extract, but I also use yeah. just like powders. powders. And yeah. I I actually made like a powder mix of about. 20 different powders, like there is acerola, there is bilberry, lingonberry, uh, blueberry, strawberry, uh, there's also like the black currants, uh, like all kinds of stuff. And I made up like a powder mix and I mix like a tablespoon of that in my coffee and blend it up with some cacao, some turmeric, some cinnamon, some, some like uh, Eastern spices, maybe some chili. Mm. And um, it, like then put butter and MCT oil and blend it up. It sounds like crazy, but actually with the cacao, any uh, berry powder tastes amazing. And then when you put the coffee in there, like it just works so. Works and uh, this uh, restaurant soul thing, you know, it's it's better than the red wine. You all mm. the all the berry powders that you mentioned here, they have. Uh, significantly higher amounts of resveratrol than uh, any red wine. Yeah, the whole has. like red wine industry has uh, fooled you. They're <laughs> fooling you. Like red wine is not the best or the re- like um, uh, grapes are not the best source of uh, of tr- resveratrol. Mm-hmm. Uh, transresveratrol is amazing for longevity. Uh, the highest, highest source of resveratrol is bilberry. Take that. In berries. Yeah, but the, the ultimate highest source is actually Japanese nut wheat. So that's that's mm. uh, why usually the transverse varietal is sourced from Japanese nut wheat, for example, in life extension products. But if you just put if you would just put straight up resveratrol to your coffee as David Sinclair does, it tastes like boop. It, it, it tastes 
absolutely horrible. So this this has to be just a marketing like thing. I I, I cannot believe that anybody would put this resveratrol as as such to the coffee mm. because it's it's ruining it. Ma- Manlio is commenting that he's using rosemary oil. I know mm. that Seamland also uses rosemary in his coffee. I actually have to start putting that in my coffee. Good reminder. Thank you very much for that. Mm. All right. So, h- what techniques do you use then to like really help you to like focus on task and not like have like massive blood sugar fluctuations? Well, uh, definitely not eating. Like intermittent fasting, that's been a staple for me. Like uh, maybe six, seven years, almost, or like ninety-nine percent of the days uh, of the year. Uh, I do some kind of intermittent fasting. Uh, I used to do one meal a day uh, for quite long, but then I realized that um, I didn't get enough calories. So um, now eating two solid meals per day, but still having like 16 hours of fasting, that uh, seems to work pretty well. But th- you know that works o- also for cognitive like performance. But uh, this is uh, this slide is it's from the Biker's Brain Nutrition Guide and all the benefits of time restricted eating or basically intermittent fasting. It, it's not just brain health, but uh, all kinds of metabolic stuff. And uh, what I realized for me is is uh, like the rest or the gastrointestinal system, and it, it seems to have also had a positive effect on 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 the uh, IBS stuff that I. I've been struggling with uh, quite a long time, but um, yeah, a lot of a lot of good stuff, and um, that's that's um, a way to keep the blood sugar very stable. I usually sip my fatty coffee with some herbs, like every now and then. I usually make in the morning, and it might last till the end of the day. So it's it's like every now and then have a little bit of caffeine, a little bit of uh, MCTs, a little bit of some kind of goodness, cinnamon, vanilla, mm. or other spices. And it's not really disrupting like uh, the autophagy or, or the fasting effects. And um, yeah, that, that's one of the things uh, I really do like. And uh, here are like two examples what you can do. For me, definitely like the late time restrict feeding has been the way to go if I really want to concentrate on work. But let's say if you work out, like very hard workout in the in the morning, then uh, probably you would like to like to eat maybe like at, at least two hours after that to get the maximum like recovery. But you know, this this uh, both of these work and uh, there are a bit different kind of differences, but not really any major effects if you want to lose weight they both work but um, for me it's the the, the later uh, time restricted eating is the best i think they did like a study on rodents um, by restricting it to early time restricted eating and that's where the circadian rhythm stuff comes from and its effects and um, but then it was also like the study was repeated by restricting the time window to the evening and it also had the same kind of metabolic benefits for blood sugar regulation. So same amount of calories when restricted to the evening or morning, like they both actually improved insulin sensitivity. So personally, I just from a work perspective, like I prefer to restrict my calories into the evening when the sun goes down. Um, so I'm not like someone who is eating, um, uh, like uh, restricting eating only to the hours when the sun is up. Um, it works for me much better that I, during the day, I don't eat and in the evening. That's when I have usually two meals, like two dinners, back to back, like uh, within a four, four hour window. Mm. That works really nice. You're for a me. dinner guy, as, as uh, usually I am. But um, yeah, let's go maybe into optimizing circadian rhythms and about rest and recovery what you can do about it, why it is so crucial to have a good circadian rhythm. And uh, it's it's not just that uh, it's, it's uh, adjusting your biological clocks, which it does, but it's also increasing your NAD levels, which means that you will have more energy uh, to use, more energy in the cells, and probably you're going to age also a lot more slowly. Mm. Yeah, Asa is, uh, Astra, Astra is uh, commenting that uh, he or she made uh, shiitake extract 
shit. Okay. So you can buy shiitake from the store and make your own own like mushroom <laughs> extracts. I make my own chaga extract. So when I make chaga tea out of chaga, like after I don't get any like concentrated tea out of it, that's when I put it in alcohol. Some good Japanese mm. whiskey is amazing. And then basic Japanese yeah, whiskey. Like, like like basically <laughs> the way you do it is um you take like uh, uh alcohol and you fill it up until it's like full uh full of the stuff and you let it steep for two weeks and then you filter it out mm. and it's good to use and put in a tincture bottle. You can do that for mushrooms, whatever you want. Uh yeah, awesome. So on the circadian rhythm aspect, like we did send you an email about the different benefits of it. Uh, and one of the things that really helps you to synchronize your circadian rhythms is to get the morning light. It's actually more important than going to sleep at the same time, but it really helps your circadian rhythm to go to sleep at the same time, wake up at the same time. Because you, if you miss that specific window, it's more likely you will still stay up like another 90 minute cycle. Mm. So you get like, tired in the evening and then if you don't go to sleep like suddenly you actually feel more alert and it leads yeah. to like 1 a.m. or something. Also sleep onset time is, is, is uh, much more like lower yeah. that you get easily sleep. Luckily over ring also it gives you this kind of window that hey this is uh, the optimal time based on, on your circadian rhythms to go to the sleep. Yeah. In the morning, it's good to like do a little bit of exercise. Uh, I think Huberman commented commented that you should like exercise within two hours of waking up, and you shouldn't have caffeine within thirty minutes of waking up. There is like no added benefit of mm-hmm. like having caffeine right when you wake up. So don't make coffee immediately. Wait a little bit or make it and drink it later. So do something else for the first thirty minutes, and then. Within two hour window, if you do exercise, uh, it's not going to be your best window in terms of blood flow and getting your best results. Like for example, weightlifting that is after work, like around like 5 p.m. But in the morning, like doing a little bit of cardio or like a little bit of like lymphatic exercises and stretches and you know something like this, maybe a quick heat might be a really nice way to start the day. Yeah, for me personally, if, if I want to reflect, it's uh, I don't like to work out hard in the morning. It's it's usually a 10 minute routine that basically I just like open up my body and shake it a little bit and do some like body tapping. And then I go outside barefoot. Of course, now it's winter time, so I also get some nice cold exposure there and do a li- little bit of Tai Chi movement. And, uh, you know, maybe I might do a, like 15 minute yoga session with my wife if, if she's there. So just to wake, wake the body up and uh, uh, I wouldn't necessarily do heat session, at least not too long session, because that's um, maybe like spiking the cortisol and the stress levels too much. But of course people do that too. But uh, let's say like the best time for heat would be uh, maybe in the afternoon when you have the fastest reaction time or coordination. And uh, of course that's about your preferences when you do want to work out. And um, many people actually, if you think about cold exposure, they do it in the morning, like ice swimming. That's also something I'm, I am i don't that much like, but I like to do it in the evening. And that's uh, one of the reasons that you have the highest body temperature at, at, at around seven o'clock. And so let's say if you go to the sauna, have a sauna session and also have a really nice cold exposure that seems to be working physiologically the best at at least for me so you can think about this kind of optimized time for for different kind of things and realize that we have these rhythms and if you repeat if you have routines and you repeat these like the exact times uh, the same goes with meal times it's it's a it's it's a kind of like this uh, signal to your body to adjust the clocks so it's it's not just about the light which is absolutely crucial, but it's also about eating, about yeah. movement, and even uh, drinking fluids. One of the things that you may want to consider is not to do the ice dip like too close to bedtime, because that's gonna like all yeah. the hardcore like sessions. Four hours. Yeah, that would be ideal. But two hours already before is is already pretty good. And uh, um, one thing I I like to do in the morning I mentioned already in the last. Uh, webinar is infrared sauna instead of a traditional sauna in the morning that can be combined mm. with, with some ice bath also like 
Uh, so yeah, like if you have like any other hacks or tricks that you do specifically in your morning routines uh, or day routines or how you, you know, work smarter, not harder, like please put it in the comments. Um, so in the end, it's all about like learning to conduct yourself from the morning when you wake up until the evening, go to sleep, like that's the smarter way. Like you reduce distractions, um, you optimize your circadian rhythms, you opti optimize your metabolism, you optimize your energy sources and feeding so that uh, most of the energy and balance goes into your brain when you need to focus. And when you are not focusing on work, that's when you like try to bounce back and relax as effectively as possible. Also reminding yourself to have some exercise throughout the day. And if you want to really learn uh, how to do all these things properly, uh, we really, really recommend you to consider buying the optimized work life course that we have developed. It's one of mo our most like uh, comprehensive courses. Um, you can find it for, from bikercenter.com. Um, if we look at the like uh, index of the whole course, um, if you go into the index section. Index, there so, we go. So um, there is like six sections, optimal productivity and ergonomics, optimal sleep and recovery, optimal stress management, optimal nutrition and energy management, and optimal mobility and movement. So those are extremely good, um, like, uh, and a compre very comprehensive for sure. Uh, sections that really dive deep into how you can optimize your work. And it's actually minus 50% right now, so 97 euros. Um, can you go to the website also, like, sure. like on the bottom of the page? Um, so at uh, bikercenter.com, what we did, we updated the whole page. Like if you haven't been there for a while, uh, go and, and check it. It's totally new. Go, go and check yeah. it out. Uh, so all our courses are here, um, all the different books and guides. Uh, one of the guides that we really recommend from this topic is the Biker's Brain Nutrition Guide. Uh, the Biker's Brain Nutrition Guide has like all these different things. If you're interested in like nutrition and the brain and nootropics and all that, you should really check that out. For general nutrition, we also released a nutrition guide that's like a uh, really uh, comprehensive one. Um, in terms of events, if you want to learn directly from us, go to go come and in April 28th of, uh, to 30th of April to Bikers Retreat in Tallinn. Me and Oli will be there. You, you have the ability to deep dive. I'm going to make you my personal favorites in terms of uh, different beverages. I'm going to teach you all the different beverages I use, including the one where I use all the berry powders. And uh, I also give alternatives to people who don't drink caffeine. And uh, yeah, I mean, we also have Biker Summit later this year, um, but we really, for, uh, we really recommend you to like check out the Biker's Retreat. Uh, that is just one month from now. And that, that's once in a lifetime experience. Yeah, for sure. Time, like yeah. we don't have like uh, dissatisfied customers when it comes to this whole event. So smash the button, you know, on the page and, and get on there. Um, and this is going to be really epic. And the reason is that uh, Lee Evin uh, is there guiding also all the breath work and um, like all the ice bath sauna stuff. So he's going to teach you how to do all those things safely and properly. And he's going to teach you all the different breathing methods and, and techniques. And we also have some really amazing artists like Christine and Jani and, and Magdalena as well as uh, Mikko who are guiding different sessions from um, fire ceremony to kakao ceremony and uh, playing music for us throughout the whole experience. Uh, we have amazing meals, amazing location. The nature has just woken up. It's three days. The first day is like a deep dive into biohacking this, uh, nutrition. The second day is an optimized day where we do all these things together. And then um, the third day is a recovery day, sound healing, kakao ceremony, some sharing and stuff like this. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's almost sold out. So uh, check it out. It's uh, a, bit, a bit more than one grand to come in, but it's all inclusive. And uh, on our store, you also may want to take a look at the, the functions menu. And from functions menu, you find cognitive and mental performance. 
and there's actually also a section on work and ergonomics you may want to take a look at. So there's some really awesome supplements and, and technologies and things that are really great for focused attention. So we have some of our favorite coffee blends. Like, like if your coffee is like a regular upgraded coffee, consider buying, you know, limitless superfood coffee, for example, or the Chocoloco one is also pretty good um, because it has like all these other things in addition to coffee that really helps your brain perform better. So it's a bit like an optimized version of, of your typical coffee. There's also the Kickstarter super superfood coffee for your mornings. I want to mention this uh, before we go out and uh, like uh, put put a wrap on this webinar. Uh, I've been using this maybe a couple of years every day, and this is absolutely wonderful. And uh, what I what I do, I use it uh, in the morning. Uh, there's different programs. I use it for like energy and just like um, uh, waking my brain up, improving cognitive functions and so on, and in the evening I put it in the back of my head, uh, I use it for relaxation, uh, maybe even for meditation, and uh, you know, prime my brain to go to the sleep, and uh, this, this is, a, I don't know if you, if you have used this demo, but uh, I absolutely love this, and of course it looks a bit stupid, uh, like my wife says, hey, you have this like hair uh, kind of uh, <laughs> band, but uh, I kind of like it, I have my like blue light in between the glasses in the morning and then I have this band in my head and I'm on my shorts like walking uh, like barefoot in the snow w with these on and uh, I sometimes uh, wonder what my neighbors think if they show me outside doing the Tai Chi with having <laughs> this kind of gear on but I don't really care uh, that's that's uh, what, what gets me going and wakes wakes me up like perfectly but uh, this Neo Rhythm PMF device it's absolutely brilliant you have a band in your head. That sounds yeah. dangerous. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, of course, like one of those tools that every biohacker should have, like if you don't have yet, uh, and by the way, we have really awesome like articles here. But one of those things that we really do recommend is of course, like some, some good pair of uh, blue light blocking glasses. So get some from BuckerCenter.com if you don't have have these cool pairs. Yeah, somebody asked, what, what, what's the glass is? But yeah, it's uh, this is the day glass. And what we have here with the lady and the with demo here are the evening glasses. So they're like both both one of these uh, in a beautiful box. And Mikko here is going to present this uh, in the video and uh, different models. Yeah, the only, only has not this retro, retro like this is actually Exactly the same glasses that Tony Stark has in uh, in the Iron uh, Man Marvel Iron, Iron Man movie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, these are these one ones that I don't have right now. Are these are not on sale, but there is like the same ones with black frames and uh, red glasses. So yeah, I mean, uh, I I have to say at this point. I wish I knew all of these things like 10 years mm. ago or like 20 years ago. Uh, I wish I knew this when I was like on call all the time in the hospitals with like bright lights and uh, bad air and shitty food and uh, like uh, disrupted sleep. But uh, that's that's how it, what, what has led me into this this uh, path of uh, health optimization. But uh, yeah, that's it, it wouldn't be funny if we had it all like... Uh, when 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 you were young, but uh, mm. our children do have awesome. So with this, like I have to thank you all for joining in into the webinar. I hope that you have learned something how to work smarter, not harder. And in the end, it's all about ability to bounce back. It's not about reducing the work that you do or like working just four hours a day or something. But you can work, you know regular hours or even like over over time, but then you have to really like learn how to conduct yourself so that you don't kill yourself in the process. So hopefully this helps mm -hmm. uh, and uh, smash the like button, share if you like this one. Smash leak. And see you in, in the next the webinar. See you. Ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Adieu.